Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Beyond the Box Virtual Roundtable Discussion Series, Chapter 4. I can't believe that I've reached Chapter 4 because when this idea came to my mind, uh, I wasn't sure how it would be received. But I'm really glad that you all have been loving these discussions. So our first one was on blogging. The second one, of course, you know, it was on digital publishing. The last one was on microfiction writing. And today's topic is something very special. Uh, it is special for me personally also because um, I started my writing journey you know with poetry because the first thing ever I wrote as a child uh, was a poem and that's how I realized that I do love writing. So today's um, discussion is going to be amazing because I have eminent poets of India here with me who are going to talk to us about the poetic play and you know we will learn from the horse's mouth how they really play around with words you know to every time wow us and just leave us enthralled so i'm super excited and i hope you are too and let me introduce my panel with me today so i get on screen my first panelist g akila hi akila and welcome to btb roundtable discussion series thank you so much yeah so um g akila has presented her poems at the sahitya academy hyderabad litfist goa litfist and tedx she has also been published in anthologies and online journals of repute. She works and resides in Hyderabad with her husband, daughter, and the muse. And I'm very proud to say she's also my neighbor. We live in the same society. And she has always been somebody I've looked up to as a writer, as a person. And it's amazing always, you know, to associate with her. And I'm glad we are associating again today. Thank you, Anu. Thank you so much for having me. And equally a pleasure to know you. You are one, uh, you know, I don't know what you eat, but that's a discussion we'll have off the table. So yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this today. Same here, same here. So let's get the second panelist on stream. And the second panelist with me today is the Jasmine Khurana. <laughs> I'm sure you all have watched her amazing spoken word videos. Welcome, Jasmine. And I'm so happy that you could take out time for today's discussion. Thank you so much, Anu, and I can't thank you enough for curating this first. And then uh, be with such uh, prolific poets is it really an honor for me. Thank you so much. How sweet. So uh, let me just quickly introduce Jasmine to all of you. Jasmine Khurana is an ex-economics lecturer now dancing to the real soundtrack of her life as a writer and spoken word artist. Her stories and spoken word pieces hover around bridging gaps across genders and generations. She is best known for Six Yards Are My Cave, which is one of my favorites too. And it's impossible that you might have not watched that video. It, it went like really viral and banter between generations. She has been featured by Homegrown as one of the seven spoken word artists to have made an impact through poetry spoken word in 2017. She is the winner of Orange Flower Award for writing in the humor space at the Women's Web Digital Summit 2017. She was awarded Liberal Lady uh, by Music Arts Poetry Festival 2018 for writing about women's lives in an elegant and entertaining way. She has been declared Speaker of the Year 2019 by Inspire Beyond Motherhood Awards, and she is the winner of the She the People Digital Woman Award under Leadership Category 2019. And of course, the really honorable, she is the winner of Rex Karamvit Chakra Award 2019, instituted by International Confederation of NGOs and United Nations for being a change maker. And uh, I, as I said, uh, Jasmine, you've been an inspiration. And again, thank you so much. That is quite a long list of awards, I must say. <laughs> thank you so much. I'm humbled. OK. And now we have with us the amazing Mona Lisa Joshi. Welcome, Mona Lisa. Hello. She is, I must say that, uh, you know, uh, I have connected with a lot of people, of course, online as a part of my work and her work, her dedication, her writing. Like I remember reading a couple of her poems and just thinking that, wow, this is really amazing. So she is definitely somebody who whose work I always look forward to read. Um, Mona Lisa Joshi is a writer, editor, reviewer and poetess. Uh, she is an active member of an international poetry group called the Awakening Poets and also can be found on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, 
with a major in english literature um she uh, feels deeply inspired by elizabethan poetry and victorian women poet like you know christina rossetti and thus she loves writing ballads and folklores she is also the founder and chief editor of a digital international journal called plethora blogazine and finds time for her writing amid the homely chores her two sons her husband and a beautiful family life uh, where she has won numerous awards uh but yeah i mean just uh, you know some of her achievements in terms of the contest she won she has won third position in a short story contest held by story mirror in the year 2016 she won first position in writing a long poem held by the enigmatic magazine and in the year 2018 her name was recognized among the top 50 winners under the prompt given by author anand neelakanthan of bahubali fame at the right india contest of times of india so thank you so much once again mona lisa i mean of course you know i think all of you have such wonderful bios that i practically cannot read the entire thing but then you know i'm really humbled that uh, you could take out time to be a part of this discussion today it's my honor thank you anupama for having me thank you and my final panelist for today is somebody who we all look up to uh, we all love her work she's somebody who always inspires all of us uh, and what always amazes me is her humility you know i mean she's such an achiever but she's so loving and humble thank you so much santosh ma'am for taking our time to be part of this discussion thank you for having me it's a delight to be amongst all of you thank, thank you, you. So, ma'am, of course, you know. I mean, she has again humongous achievements. But I will just introduce her uh, in my capacity. So, Dr. Santosh Bhakaya, recipient of the International Rural Award for Writing and Literature, for her long narrative poem "Pohar," Sethu Award, Bharat Nirman Award for Literary Excellence, Keshav Malik Award, is an academic poet, novelist, biographer, essayist, and speaker. a creative writing mentor who stead talk on the myth of writers block is very popular in creative writing circles it's an amazing tech talk even i have watched it uh, and it makes so much of sense she runs a much appreciated column morning meanderings and learning and creativity.com which will soon have a kindle version her three mystery novels now out of print Uh, for young adults were very well received her poetic biography of mahatma gandhi ballad of bapu has been internationally acclaimed under the apple book Where are the lilacs? Songs of belligerents, flights from a terrace, bring out the tall tales, a sky full of balloons are some of her other books which have received laurels. So thank you so much once again, ma'am, and I am really delighted that I have such an established panel here with me today. The pleasure is all ours. The pleasure. Ours. Yeah, and I can already see comments, but uh, we'll talk, you know, uh, I'll definitely uh, take those comments. Uh, as we get along you know in the discussion but i want to uh, start from the start like you know uh, how did you develop a love for poetry and do you remember poem which you ever wrote sorry i can't hear you you can't hear me what about the others are you able to hear me yes you uh, voice audible. Audible. audible yeah okay okay so uh, So, in case, ma'am, if you're having some problem, probably you can try logging off and logging in again. Hello. Okay. Hello. Yeah. So, I was asking uh, that you know, like, how did it all start? Uh, how did you develop a love for poetry? And uh, you know, like, if you remember the first poem that you ever wrote, like, you know, I do remember. So, yeah, if you have any memory of that, so let's begin with you, Akila. Um. well i i think art is always by chance you know right. no one really takes you and uh, says that okay do it and right. uh, of course uh, these times uh, with the children it's very different there's a lot of exposure there's a lot of opportunity we want them to try out everything before they decide on one so right. for me poetry was again by chance i i have always loved uh, reading right from my childhood i was fed on an ample dosage of tinkle and chanda mama and champak and what not it was like given a book and you read it and i think uh, the, the the first you know, i'm not sure if i can even call it a poem now you know it's it's, it's those rhymes which we write uh, you know mother father rhyming like that 
no bad <laughs> right. fat bad mad and we are so happy that we wrote one so if you're referring to that as a first one i think that goes back i think uh, as part of the summer holiday task you know which i got it in school in fifth grade if that has to be called a poem uh, that was titled grandmother I think that was the first of it but i think more serious poetry happened a uh, couple of years back i think around 2000 uh, i i started writing fiction i used to write short stories and then uh, then i realized that perhaps i can again poetry just happened right. and then and then i i don't think i've uh, looked back since then so the more serious part of poetry i think came up maybe around 2010 11 12 okay around that okay. time that's when the serious poetry happened but yeah that's from me wow okay wonderful uh, what about you jasmine so because you were an economics lecturer so you know like how did that transition happen and why is spoken word poetry uh, so i uh, as uh, abhi uh, never planned it right? and poetry you do go find poetry the poetry comes to you so in my case also i never i in fact i'm very surprised at times how i started writing poetry i was blogging i was writing prose i was mm. writing humor uh, for a lot of websites that also after i turned 20 after i might had and then it was sort of sabbatical from um, right to work life and uh, let motherhood parenting consume myself totally allowed me to do that right so when i started but it's always a compulsive chronicler of moments of milestones of memories and everything so most of my writing found uh, like since the early days from my college days was closet right i was a closet writer for the longest time in fact now also most of my writings are for closets only very few come out but uh, I remember I was walking and all, and it was just it occurred to me that there was one uh, my own story. You, I turned forty, and I woke up suddenly to my story that in the most ordinary, uh, I mean, it was ordinary. But then we all have we have to look for extraordinary in our stories, and we need to be telling our stories. I just realized that I needed to keep it. Um, it should have a kind of flow, and I need to compress it to a little. And that is. it's just happened accidentally that i wrote a mother a girl a woman uh on four years back uh thinking that this is one two piece i will write in a poem form and then get back to my blog because you know uh, i was still uh, not calling myself a writer but you know the order of what happened and all because when you don't have any technical background and I mean, we are all self-taught. Most of us are self-taught right. writers. Right. Right. So I used to feel that I really have the courage to call myself a writer, and then to a poet. So I thought I would write this in a lyrical way, and that suited the story well. I. I... Right. uh i think she got disconnected uh so probably yeah, no problem i think we can move on to santosh ma'am ma'am if you could just uh talk about you know how did you develop a love for poetry and if you remember the first poem you'd ever written yeah i think we lost you there uh, jasmine probably for a bit yeah that was taken really well it connected with people somehow i think i tasted blood with that uh, i i could not go back to my blogging i could not go back to writing prose and uh, since then i've not looked back i am a very free i mean infrequent writer i write very little i should be doing more but uh, that's the way it happened and it all happened very accidentally it wasn't planned at all it was maybe i thought i will take a little detour and do this and then go back by the way i was writing so as the say poetry finds you some way or the other right 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 nice nice santosh ma'am can you hear me now i think you were having some issues uh, with the sound can you right now let's see <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> hello can you yes So, ma'am, can you share Hello. how did you uh, develop a love for poetry, and uh, you know, like uh, when did you start writing poems? Hello. Hello. Yeah, we can. Um, hear you, we can hear you, ma'am. 
I didn't. I didn't. I didn't text you. Did you say something? Yeah. I. I. Am I audible to you? I can't hear you. Uh oh. Okay. I can't hear you. Oh, um, ma'am, would you like to probably log off and log in again because we are able to hear you. Hello. Okay. Um, I think ma'am is having some problem. Uh, so let's try why we sort that out. Uh, Mona, can you probably then uh, maybe you know just take this discussion forward, like how we are. If you could talk about how it started in your case. Yeah. Uh, basically, as Jasmine has just said, ki poetry finds find you. It's actually true. It happened in my case as well, because uh, I was like uh, married and I have like I was having two little babies, <laughs> so I was not finding time for anything. I was just running behind, you know, the clothes, the children. So suddenly one day it was raining and there was thunderstorm and something, you know, uh, from the inside, it was like pushing as if something, some emotion, something wants to come outside. And uh, I have just bought a laptop at that time and I really didn't know how to use it. <laughs> it was in 2013. So I wrote my first poem at that time. It was uh, titled Rain and, and My Soul. And that was the first poem I wrote. And then there was no looking back. And now I have three books to my credit, poetry book. But yes, I have evolved from the time I started. And uh, now my style has changed. And uh, as I keep on reading uh, many new poets, the contemporary ones, the you know, like my friends also on in Facebook. So right. I learn a lot from them. And slowly, you know, you start developing your own style. So my journey uh, basically started from 2013. But now uh, it's 2020. And I think I have started writing prose. I'm writing uh, many things. <laughs> so <laughs> this is something yeah. actually has found me. Poetry has found me. It's true. Nice. 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 That's nice. So I think it's yes, uh, some way, you know, like poetry found all of us. Ma'am, are you able to hear me now? I am not sure if... Uh... I, it looks like there seems to be uh, sound issues for Santosh, ma'am. I think she's trying to fix it. So uh, I think that's fine. Probably once she's sorted, we can, of course, chat with her. Uh, so now, okay, so you shared about how it started. Um, uh, now, what I wanted to also know was... Um, Okay, you you know, I mean, we all know that poetry is so varied, like there are so many styles. And I think even though the form varies somewhere, um, I think that rhythm, that basic, you know, fluidity somewhere, you know, it is at the core of every style or every form of poem. So I wanted to know that what poetry means to you and when you write, like what is your style? And you know, like, how do you approach writing poetry? So, so from your aspect, like, if you could just talk to us about that, uh, it would be really interesting to know that. So, this time, probably we can start with you, Jasmine. And I think somebody uh, just commented that you're not audible. I think it's that same issue. Um, maybe you could just get that microphone slightly closer. Okay. I hope it is okay. Yeah, now. I think this is better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So yeah, so yeah, how, like, what is your style and, you know, how do you approach writing poetry? Like, what does it mean to you? You know, uh, when I'm, uh, I press uh, Anupama, and then when I'm asked that question, uh, I'm very confused at times because I have not, never applied too much brain to the process of it. Yeah. <laughs> happens. And when I'm asked, right. and, and it's not you, I mean, it's a very valid question and a very relevant question to be asked. But then I have to actually uh, look inside to find that, uh, that answer for it. Uh, but I think there is that, that rhythmic ebb and flow, the chaos, the bio and right. the, the whole, uh, I mean, uh, that, that luxury to be able to use metaphors and similes and create a right. visual uh, kind of uh, imagery and, uh, and to maybe play beyond the obvious. Uh, yes, leaving, yes. Leaving something really elusive. I guess today, unfortunately, we seem to be having technical issues. 
um but it's okay we will work around it because we have to do what we got to do so yeah i think jasmine is back yeah. okay i think we're in the middle yes of the i think we are battling real yes. i mean you know yeah. technical issues today <laughs> but it's okay we like i said we'll work around it so yes jasmine you were saying so, something yeah. i thought that little elusiveness about it that it doesn't need i mean uh, you don't have to put everything down literally it doesn't i have to have a literal literal or logical so i think it allows me a lot of liberty a uh, lot more liberty than it shows on the situation so i can tend to just want to go in to a i can throw in uh, references from my past i mean whatever my academics or because i am not using metaphors from nature and all i'm using all metaphors from my own body or my my body of work and all of that so uh, it maybe for to put that is the main attraction in, uh, uh, that mm. poetry has and uh, if you ask about my style i think it is basically confessional and uh, it's a narration kind of thing because i'm talking yes. mostly my own story now i leave it to the yes. people how they take it and what they gather out of it my stories are just plainly the ordinary stories the way i have lived life or the way i look at life so uh, it's all these things in totality that uh, ensure that i i'm hooked on to it i think now right 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 that's interesting a uh, ma'am what uh, can you hear us now because i think uh, you have been having some issues with the sound uh, are you able to hear me now okay but not the first one okay okay i'm so glad ma'am because i was just worried if we will not be able to interact with you uh, so ma'am yes so if you could share uh, you know that what like what is your style of writing poetry so basically everybody has a different style uh hello all of my just start speaking i don't know get the question i just say something about my how it all started yeah well, yeah sure sure because you had a shoot so yeah please please share yeah yep. this started this girl a very cocky and very arrogant looking girl she walked up to the classroom and she sat on the last bench oh 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 Yeah, so uh, yeah i know today it's you know some days are like that unfortunately uh, but let's see i hope yes ma'am yeah please continue and uh, i'm sorry to the audience uh, please bear with us because you know the technical challenges i'm sure all of you understand so just we are trying to work around it uh, yes ma'am okay again yep okay, yep Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yep. So, uh, so this girl, she came to the school for the first time, and uh, she was a, she had a very arrogant air about her, you know. And she would just sit on the last bench and she would write something. And I asked her, "What is she writing?" She did not answer. But later on, I came to know that she was writing a limerick, and I did not know at that point of time. I did not know what a limerick was. My dad told me that a limerick is a five-line verse. With the line theme of A A B B A, and I got hooked on limerick from that day. I started writing limerick, and I still do. In fact, I was so obsessed with writing limerick that uh, my poetic biography of Mahatma Gandhi is uh, written in this line theme of A A B B A. The oh. entire book of three hundred pages has been written in that. So I was obsessed. Very nice. So that was the beginning, and I still keep writing limerick. Uh, but when I write, you know, my, it is my heart which dictates me. My right. heart, uh, my head is feeling. A lot of people tell me that you don't have a head. So uh, <laughs> she, she uh, keeps telling me that you have a social embarrassment and you keep defying it all. <laughs> but uh, whenever I write, you know, it is my heart which is doing the writing. Right, right. My and head, I think that's uh, my head is feeling. Yep, 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 yep. That's yeah. lovely to know, ma'am. And uh, <laughs> yeah, good. and. So this is how it started. Lovely. I started, I started writing, and uh, then I started using writing. And uh, basically, I'm a storyteller. So yes. poetry is narrative poetry. And this is my latest book, which uh, oh, how, which it is very surrealistic, 
very helpful for those who are trying to do some damage to all. So uh, uh, the uh, Mona Lisa, I also write to like go, uh, go stories. I like go stories, and I keep writing go stories. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was talking about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Ma'am has nice. actually written one story for the audio book. Audio book just we have launched few days back. It's called Unearthly Lores, and uh, Ma'am has written uh, the book Thieves. So you can hear. Uh, you can listen to it in podcast. It's available. I'll share the link. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. We will do that for sure. Uh, so thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing that. So Mona Lisa, yeah. So what's your style and how do you approach poetry? What does poetry mean to you? Uh, well, my style has evolved. Through... Sorry, ma'am. Uh, you were saying Hello. something. I think Santosh, ma'am, was saying. Are you something. talking to me, Anupma? No, no, no. Actually, I think ma'am is having issues with the sound. No, no. I'm talking to Mona, ma'am. Uh, Yes, yes, Mona. Uh, so basically, when I started, I was uh, uh, following no particular pattern or style form. I just wrote because I wasn't aware much about poetry. So first book contains poems that are like uh, you know just straight from the heart, or you can call them amateurish. Because uh, but uh, in each poem there's a story. Uh, what I always try to do is to you know uh, narrate a story through each of my poem. So that thing has stayed with me till now. But uh, in my second book, if you see Terracotta Dreams, I have experimented with many form styles. Like I've written in ballad, I've written folklore, then I've written uh, I've experimented with sonnets. I've uh, you know, uh, improvised them in a different way. Then I've written stan in stanzas. Then there are musings. Right. But right uh, nowadays, what I'm uh, following mostly is the pre verse or the contemporary style, uh, because uh, it comes straight from the heart, and you you can just uh, go with the flow. The language can be lucid, and you can be expressive. So that yes. is the style right now. I'm uh, nowadays I'm following basically, and my poems are basically women oriented. Uh, my themes are on that only. So I try to express emotions. Whatever I observe outside, those are yeah. also uh, changed into poem. But whenever I, uh, you know, I see stories on people's faces. So uh, I always see if they are like I see somebody and he, he or she might be standing, uh, you know, quietly. But I see a story beneath their their faces. Yeah, I don't know true, 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 true. And I right. come back and I try to mold it into something different, and it you know changes into a poetry, it into a poem maybe or a short story. And another thing that happens is the uh, what happens with me is like uh, I. Have dreams. I I see very vivid kind of dreams, so I change them into stories. This is what I oh, do. Oh, that's interesting. So dreams yeah. into poetry. I think that's a great uh, idea. Actually, I must say. Yeah, because, <laughs> uh, nice, nice. Okay. Uh, what about you, Akila? Because you have a very again, you know, unique uh, style of writing poetry. So yeah, yeah. If you could just talk about it and how do you approach it. Yeah, so I mainly uh, dwell in free verse, the the contemporary form which doesn't follow a rhyme or a meter. But then, uh, as you said, you know, any any poem for that matter has to have that inbuilt rhythm. It has to have a flow which which is very fluid. And uh, you know, even even if there are lines staggered across, you know, how they are put, it doesn't matter. But what matters is the flow. I also write uh, the Japanese genre of uh, poems, which is uh, haiku, tanka, and haibun, which is uh, prose poem. So haibun is basically prose with, uh, you know, poetry. That poem is usually, uh, you know, a haiku. And of course, there is tanka okay. prose also, similarly. So uh, along with rhythm, I think what is also important is, you know, the image. So, uh, mm. especially yes. from, uh, in fact, my own images in three verse have taken a lot from, from you know, after my exposure in the Japanese uh, genre, because there, in three lines, we have to show an image. There are rules, of course, not the syllable rules. There is much more than the syllable count of five seven five uh, to high yes. Uh, yes. But uh, uh, you know uh, the the focus is always on showing a very concrete image, and I yes. think that practice of uh, looking for concrete images, which come from your observations, which uh, you know comes from of course your own experience, 
has influenced my uh, style of uh, free verse also mm -hmm. because in high school okay. uh, forms we believe that you know it's a word painting i need to show you if i'm saying we usually don't use uh, you know abstract words like beautiful happy sad we need to show why it's beautiful i need to you know i can't say i'm happy i have to say it's a laugh or it's a, it's a it's a giggle or you know uh you know whatever a guffaw or whatever something of that yes, sort yes yes so when we when we show that kind of words uh, you know in free verse also it kind of you know opens up the image rather than you know just being an abstract piece of Correct. course abstractness Correct. abstractness can be in the thought of it but if if the writing uh, if in writing we can use concrete images to show it uh, you know then i think we involve the reader in it so right. uh, right. this has been my experience even in uh, you know uh, reading poetry uh, there are a lot of uh, new fresh faces in uh, you know contemporary writing today and if you if you pick up their pieces you know that there's a lot of images and and you know as they all said jasmine said mona lisa said we all have stories it's yes. just that you know we have a different form for it yeah uh, you know so and and i don't stick to any theme per se so most of it has been memories personal anecdotal maybe you know yeah. some yeah. using yeah. random uh and of course you know the ladies compartment come on how can you take it out of your own skin so <laughs> that's uh, yeah so that that that's about my writing yes yeah lovely yes yes absolutely and yeah you know so while all of you have different styles uh, i think this thing again like you know i think it came out from this discussion that how at the core again you know there there are stories there are anecdotes and a lot of personal perceptions or you know experiences come out i think in the form of poetry and um, uh, before we go further i just want to say that you know uh, we have some comments from the audience so probably i'll just uh, so tina uh has said said hello to everybody she says so good to see all of you akila jasmine monali zan santosh pakka ma'am and looking forward to an in insightful session thank you so much tina yeah and uh, also if the audience like if you all have any questions for uh, you know our panelists if, if related to poetry or their journeys anything anything you want to ask or anything you simply just want to comment feel free to do so i'll take them up during the discussion as in you know when we get time uh, okay so now uh, like you know coming to my next question which is more about the perception okay so because i have heard this a lot and in general poetry is viewed as something you know like i mean you know to be very frank a lot of people are like samajh mein nahi aata you know the it's before even they read it like it's like you know it's considered to be something for the elite and you know jo intellectuals basically ki yaar poetry poetry you know like mujhe but i personally feel you know it's not that it's probably just more of a uh, image you know but then uh, what has your experience been have you ever come across this that people might have thought that okay like you know poetry yaar hamari bas ki baat nahi hai have you ever you know come across uh, that and how do you actually then deal with such experiences or do you know that this will happen and anyway you write for a certain readers like you know so so yeah how is it in your case so this time maybe mona you can start uh, well anupama this is true and it actually happened in my case as well because when my second book came and uh, some of the uh, readers i would say they were buying it and then review started coming so the first review that was uh, there was that the language is difficult so uh, <laughs> this thing, <laughs> yeah so at that point of time i was quite influenced by the you know elizabethan era and the victorian period and the uh, so slowly gradually i also started uh, reading post modernist poets and then i uh, changed my style and i became you know someone who would write more lucid in a lucid way so that people can easily read and understand they don't have to sit with a dictionary or something yes so yes. in my third book i changed that style but uh, if you say if you have to uh, write poetry it has to be your authentic style you cannot you know uh, go for the people's view that oh somebody would read you somebody would not read you because i follow my heart it, it is all about expressing your emotions uh, poetry is something uh, i would yes. say when you convey your emotions your feelings through you know po uh, poems 
or maybe a sh shorter prose piece or musings so uh, luckily because of this uh, social uh, you know meeting or connection we have got uh, the facebook or many other platforms so we have so many readers who are actually good writers so you just have to think that you are writing for yourself even if you have one audience just go for it and even if you don't have uh, any audience you should feel that it should give you that uh, contentment you have written yes. a piece so if you think yes. that uh, don't think in a marketing way that who would read who would not read because poetry is really not taken when you uh, when it comes to a book form if you go to a bookshop more people are buying fiction fiction sells easily so poetry is basically uh, not for uh, like it's for everybody everybody can read but uh, if you write it in a more lucid way it will be taken easily and for the different kind of right. styles there are readers right. who really appreciate and enjoy that kind of poetry so right. i right. feel that right. right that 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 makes sense and i and i completely relate to that also uh, so what about you jasmine so your style is a little i don't know for the lack of a better term i think it is somewhat massy like you know in in the way you reach out and the kind of you know uh, the way you play with words so uh how has your experience been in that sense like you know i mean did you uh, face or maybe you might have faced even the other way around also that you know this is not the real kind of poetry because you know spoken word is something which is popular today and of course you know so so uh, like uh, how has your experience been on the aspect of you know how your work is perceived you know uh first uh, uh, the same thing that actually uh, kholna padta hai <laughs> and that's what uh, i don't deal with it anymore i feel my poetry has to deal i mean you better deal with my poetry my right <laughs> that's a perfect perfect answer <laughs> that's a good answer actually all of us can give yeah. that next time so who take the liberty because people who are strangers will connect and make that effort of reaching out to you and telling you how we found yes. the story that how i mean we have been able to relate with lot of uh, uh, like similes that you have used or uh, inferences that you've drawn from everyday life and all of that and when you know first when you say that it is elitist i don't think it is it has nothing to do with the a, a particular level of education yes. or a, a command of language or the lack of it to be able to decide for that i think it has more to do with the frequency with which you approach poetry the readiness with which you are ready to consume it it's an immersive experience like you go to a musical concert for example and you have all the cacophony and the din in your head and you are stressed out and you sit there for an hour and you come out and say okay it didn't mean i make any difference to me so you have to have a little it's you know for a writer or a poet like any kind of writing i think you have to elevate yourself um, you have to be more aware of your surroundings of your own self you have to be self aware you have to be more mindful of a life, lot of things right. and i think it goes not just for a writer or a poet that goes for the reader as well the reader has to have that readiness to be able to take something beyond the obvious that giving the reader so mm -hmm. i think uh, for and you know we have become a generation of uh, quickies and fast food and all of mm. that we want yes yes pleasure. like we will say we will go for a take away drive through on a take away and we will say that okay it didn't give us the pleasure of a sit down three course four course meal dinner i mean it doesn't work that way you need to take out time you need to immerse yourself in that experience yes yes and uh, i think it comes with the reading more and more hearing more and more of poetry and when you talk about spoken word yes there is a lot of noise and uh, talk about whether spoken word is literature enough mm. or not mm. my view to i don't even counter that it doesn't make a difference to me because you know every era will have something new coming up and we have That's had true. this oral tradition of poetry since ages like yes. it's not yes yes because the particular term spoken word has come to us from the west so we have tagged it as something like okay it's a culture of culture we have we been 
we've done a copycat of the West thing. No, in India, we've had an oral tradition of reciting poetry of mushairas of, I mean, during the freedom movement, we have all, we, our, our Vedas, our mythology, most of it, like, uh, years and years back, before prose happened, poetry was there and it was yes. being sung aloud, it was being read aloud. And this is a digital age. You know, nothing can take away what that core poetry reading from a book has. We have all grown up, we have been fed on that. Today, you know, if I, I can think, I can never go beyond thinking um, beyond Arvindranath Tagore or Shiv Kumar Bhattavi or Amrita Pritam, like those one can take away what they, they will, the timelessness of that kind of poetry. But for me, I'm very hopeful that this is a change that this era is bringing. And maybe like mm. we have poetry, um, uh, of the best of uh, poets in our uh, curriculum tomorrow. I mean, maybe a decade or two decades, or maybe when we are not alive, some of the spoken word poetry will also be yeah, so true. Or a yeah. part of it. So yeah. I think we need to just evolve and um, uh, I mean, kind of be open to accepting new forms that are coming um, uh, our way and spoken word is a uh, uh, just offshoot of poetry if if the piece right. is not meaty enough if the piece is not good enough if it is not literature enough it is not going to connect, actually it is not going to fluff will never connect uh, yes right be it a right. story be it prose be it poetry so uh, all it's the content that matters, what you're putting in Correct. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, you made some really uh, important points there. One about, I think, poetry being an immersive experience. And hence, you know, I mean, I think the people who probably uh, really love uh, that experience or, you know, I mean, they would definitely not care about it being elitist or, you know, anything of that sort. It's just about the experience. And I also like your point about, you know, how we have to evolve with changing times, even when it comes to literature. And I think we had a very similar discussion uh, in the last round Table, which was with microfiction writer because you know microfiction also a lot of people say it's not true literature and they're like it is everything is true literature the literature has to change right it's changing and you have to adapt like you know literature it uh, adapts and we adapt to that change so yeah i and think that's uh, i'll just give you one little example i have seen it in my own case as a reader i'm not talking about mm, me as mm. a poet I, I remember when I was a teenager, I I was made to mug up uh, one of Shiv Kumar Batalvi's, I mean, it's one of his epic works, Zakham, it is against the parents of violence. It was written in the right. Indochina War. It's in Punjabi, so most of the people don't know about it. But I think it has the best of imageries in his called the Joan Keats of Punjabi. I remember as a teenager, when I mugged it up, I had zilch, not even an iota, uh, of a uh, kind of connection to it I because you know uh, maybe I was not in that mind space a few years down right. the line when for my college some inter-college recitation my state was going through a very bad political upheaval there was terrorism and there were young people into the fold of violence and all I lived every word of it because maybe that was the time I was looking for supper and solace and some kind of catharsis in some poetry. And at that point, it gave me that. Whereas right. I, mean, right. I, mean, uh, 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 I mugged it up, it didn't give me. So there is, I think, a point that finding of the sweet spot where uh, it is the writer, I think the poet finds a poet for life to go back uh, for the that we are writing it. So I think that would, that is what finally makes a reading, uh, uh, I mean, for both sides, it makes an orgasmic experience, finally. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Finally, a sweet spot where the readiness is there from the other side as well. So I think it is, I have seen it right. that is the case also. At one point, a poetry will connect. At one point, it would, would not have connected at all because maybe I wasn't ready to. I mean, yes, yes, that, that matters also.
yep yep very true so yes akila what about you because again i'm sure your style is such that i'm sure you might have got that you know ki samajh mein nahi aaya or you know i mean i i do I know, know that yeah how it is so yeah how has your experience been and do you ever get affected or you just write you know and and you just don't care okay yeah i mean whoever will read will read anyways so yeah what i, I think i think i think that's what uh, jasmine and mona lisa also spoke about you know that at the yeah. end of it yeah. writing is a journey it's right. a process it doesn't even end with one poem or one story you know we all have uh, you know since we all are into writing we also appreciate the process of editing and critiquing and we know that you know a poem even if it gets published a story even if it yes. gets published in years down the line if i see it i'll still edit edit out something and say acha ye nahi tha ye zyada hai ye kam hai you know so it's a process it's a journey so yeah. you know so so it's uh, it's it's very difficult to you know explain all this but uh, and and uh, in fact i feel that the fact that it is perceived as an elitist also comes you know from the ancient tradition because uh, you know mushairas as jasmine said mm. you know or, or mm. the shairies which used to happen the sabhas which used to happen that was the uh, you know the the privilege of the of the aristocrat class i mean because uh you know those days obviously you know the classes were very distinct so only the ones with the you know you the so called billionaires or billionaires or whatever the aristocrat class is one who used to afford it because that is where they used to have mushairas right yes but i think now yes. now those definitions don't hold good anymore yes. like we have seen that is happening across art forms you know there are people who are getting into full time they are becoming full time writers we have full time stand up comedians we have full time uh, uh, you know painters so i think those definitions have uh, uh, gone out a bit but uh, i think the the barrier is a language especially the english language definitely there is a perception they feel oh you are elitist isliye tumhari english itni achhi hai okay but within the english but within the english we have an indian english now Ah. what 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 we have is an indian english yeah which is uh, a lot influenced uh, from the british english which we have mm-hmm. and 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 you know the the next generation i mean okay i'm not that old enough but still the next generation the ones who are in the 20s you know who are just starting they are uh, you know they try to use a slang which comes from the uh, you know from the american english so as jasmine said there is going to be evolution it's it's not going to be the same so it's definitely not a surprise that people are going to still keep coming and tell you yaar ye to mere bas ki baat nahi hai but uh, but you know along the way you also meet people i i i know few friends who have been very sweet and tell me hame samajh nahi aata but we still want to listen to you which is lovely i mean i mean you feel so happy because come on i mean you know let's admit we all want an audience okay of course, we want of course. Our, yeah we want we write for ourselves no doubt about it but we want this art to go out we want to be recognized by this right so as uh, uh, you know a, a senior poet whom i know shivakami velliangiri she said if i don't call myself a poet who else will call me i really i mean the you know you you start questioning yourself you know at some point am i really a poet you know am i really a writer what do i do but it's not the question perhaps it's not even that of being called a writer or a poet because even if you look at the pieces of fiction the most beautiful pieces are those which have a lyrical quality to it even a short story you know whether whether you call it micro fiction in fact haibun which is a japanese genre of prose poem mm. is nothing but micro mm. fiction we we have uh, we we call something called a tiny haibun where the prose is written in you know in in, uh, in 20 words that is nothing but right. micro fiction and unless it has a lyrical quality to it unless the words are you know picked they are crafted it's not going to appeal to anyone so i i think uh, agar poetry samajh nahi aati to yaar fir to fiction bhi matlab uh, yeah okay i i know there is lot of fiction which sells otherwise that's that's uh, you know that's a different topic altogether Yes. but uh, i think this is this is something which we all writers face and after some time yes. we are like yaar acha likhna hai likhte jao it's a journey it's not going to end today it's not yes. going to end tomorrow right it's, right, it's right, going, right yeah it's going to be there till the last day of our lives so just live yeah. with it Lovely. you know Lovely. so even if Lovely i'm perceived uh, yeah even if i'm perceived to be someone carrying a jhola i don't mind i'll get fancy jholas which you know <laughs> match with my attire nice earrings <laughs> you know <laughs> 
I don't need to look unkempt to be called a poet or a writer for yeah, that matter. Right, right. <laughs> you know, on that jola, it reminded me how my mom once told me that you know earlier that was the image of writers, and she's yeah. like, when I see you and your friends, I'm like, wow. So we have glamorous writers today. <laughs> You know, I, I'm like I I wear good good kurtas also, yar. I'm not the always wearing the <laughs> <laughs> the plain color disheveled clothes. No. <laughs> I know we would like to flaunt, but yeah, I think the point that you're making is really valid there. And um, uh, I would just like to uh, tell the audience that uh, Santosh Bakaya man probably has been having an issue, you know, today with the network, and unfortunately, looks like she hasn't been able to join back. If she does, wonderful. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, we will still proceed with the discussion. So, I think um, it's uh, my next question is actually kind of you know from what Takila was just saying that you know she did mention about the readers, the you know the books getting published. So, I wanted to come little to that point because uh, today a lot of poets, especially you know the writers who are watching us today. And they always, I mean, of course, you know, they want to explore this form, like, you know, I mean, not just writing for themselves, but definitely they want to know what are the different, you know, opportunities they can get, like it could be in the form of video content or, you know, say book publishing. So all of you, like, you know, Mona and Akila and Jasmine, you have, of course, found success, you know, in your spheres, like probably you've had books or online journals or, you know, you've uh, like, you know, had have video content of your spoken at, you know, different uh, events as well so um in your experience uh if you could just share from that aspect like you know is there truly a market for this and also what do you think would be like you know what are the different alternatives uh that the writers today have if they want to explore this line of poetry so um yes jasmine maybe we can start with you this time um i can uh, uh, i know i can for myself because i my book yes my content is in the video space uh, on yes yes but then again um, there is no hard and fast rule what is going to work where you know um, I, I can't talk about the publishing part but because we have some words here who are into that uh, and i have never uh, uh, right that. right so uh, as far as uh, the video thing uh, the viral content is concerned you know uh, you could uh, a piece could be it's very uh, an uncertain thing what connects and what doesn't connect. Like my yes. six stars are my tape went viral on WhatsApp. It did go viral on YouTube or uh, um, it did go viral on Facebook, yes. But uh, um, it was a pirated version of it that went viral on WhatsApp. And of course, uh, I am told by the experts that uh, viral content in WhatsApp is the uh, I mean the best form of viral content because it has a part. Yeah. Uh, true, true. It's true. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, I have the space I am in, the, in the age bracket I am in. For me, it, it doesn't matter much. Uh, apart from, as uh, like Mona Lisa says and Akila says, we are writing basically for ourselves. You know, this, uh, uh, this uh, it is good because it opens new avenues for you when you are known to yes. be uh, uh, connecting and spreading and everything. So uh, for me, it opened up the performance space. Um, I mean, I I was reached out by corporates and um, uh, by uh, even the brands start coming forward. So in that context, if you're talking about the that part of it, that how it works, it uh, yes, it does help. It does help that I'm getting more shows, and that's also because you know my, my thing is basically my I mean uh, focused on the performance part of it. So when I write also. I am very openly admitting that when I write, I write it with this, uh, uh, I mean, thing in mind that yes, I am going to be performing it tomorrow. Yes, uh, of course. Uh, yeah. hmm. I do say that all poets, poetry is uh, has to have something acoustic about it. They do say that. Yes, of course. Poetry yes. Does read it aloud to uh, allow to, uh, uh, their rhythm is there or not. All these are. But in my case, uh, there has to be an audience connect. You know, I I feed on that. I'm a that. Like I, in the middle of it, I around with all, and then uh, taking it forward. So, uh, so uh, yes, wonderful. I think we explore it because it has a fast. Yes, mm -hmm. I admit that it has a faster read. But then, um, what what doesn't work? Uh, all. Uh, you just have to put your 
uh, heart and soul into it. Honestly. I think honest work connects. If you have not uh, like uh, just put it out uh, uh, so that it is while uh, or it has to be taken out. Uh, I don't think that works. If it is coming from the heart and it is your true story and people can feel that truth in that story, it is going to work whether it is in a book or it is on a video. Right, right, right. True, 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 true. Yes, very true. Yes, Mona, what about you? Like, uh, what? how has your experience, because you also have books published, so, you know, like, do you think, how is the reader market? Because there's generally this feeling that books in poetry is a challenge, you know, in terms of the sales and whether, and people always wonder that, you know, what is the scope really? So, yeah, if you could just talk from your experience. Yeah, it's true, Anupama, because uh, when I completed my manuscript and I started submitting it, I was actually mm -hmm. aiming towards the traditional ones. So because yeah. uh, at that point, I had the stigma that you, uh, I have to get published through a traditional publishing house and all. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, it was really a difficult journey because it was on, uh, only coming back as like uh, you rejected basically. Thing. So finally, I decided that when I have to pay some child, then why not go for the self-publishing mode? Yes. So yes. that stigma ended, and I uh, published my books. But in terms of uh, poetry, uh, if you say that poetry books uh, sell, uh, they really don't sell that much as, as compared to fiction. Because uh, first of all, mm -hmm. through self-publishing, uh, the publishers won't market your book that much. Uh, you have to self-market yourself. You have to promote yourself. And there are less readers of poetry because uh, I don't know why. Uh, if you uh, talk about po poets, like in a group or in a social platform, they would appreciate you. They would read you. But in terms of books, when it comes to book, they really don't sell that much. So, but mm -hmm. I will, this should not, you know, demotivate you, uh, motivate you because uh, nowadays the platforms are so wider. There are so many options. You, uh, if the aspiring writers wants to get noticed, there are uh, right. many platforms. Like you can go for Instagram, you can do your YouTube channel, uh, you can create your. Content. So uh, there's no uh, such thing that you know uh, you cannot reach to wider audience. So poetry is now reaching to many places, and it is also uh, I could say that people, uh, particularly poets and writers, who are in, I can say uh, they're like on a mission <laughs> to promote poetry, and you know uh, uh, writers. So these groups are also helping the aspiring writers a lot. Lovely. So okay. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. And I think um, uh, uh, probably the sales, uh, you know, I think uh, I mean, I feel that initially probably people shouldn't think much also about that because I guess then that becomes so deterring. You know, I think at the beginning it should just be about putting out something good out there for people to read. Yeah. And I think, you know, these things anyways happen later because I often see writers thinking too much about that at the beginning itself that, you know, how will it be received? Yeah, particularly uh, so that, yeah. the dilemma in there they are always in because when yes, I started, yes. many writers would connect with me and they would ask me that, ma'am, do you know any traditional publishing? house there who would publish my poetry book so i would simply say because mine has also got published through a self-publishing mode so go ahead and just uh, you know uh, put your baby out there somebody will read and you will slowly start making your audience so that should right. be the Yes. And it's wonderful that you yourself are providing platform now to, you know, poets. I know a plethora is doing great work. So yeah, for the people watching, uh, definitely you can reach out to Mona Lisa even for that, because she's also now not just, she's not just a poet herself, but she's giving a platform, uh, you know, to poets uh, who's probably recently started writing. So that's wonderful. And uh, yes, Akila. So in your case, I think you've definitely got published in a lot of journals and I know that you also perform. So yeah, what is uh, like you know your experience of how it is received how basically you know from the audience point of view how has the reception been uh, see there are a lot of uh, good journals uh, hmm. even in the online uh, platform and uh, hmm. of course anthologies that come in print at least mm -hmm. as far as India right. is concerned. Right. So there are a lot of journals and it's good to, uh, you know, have your work published there because at the end of it we all uh, aim at having a book in our name. Okay, so that is one baby which, as a writer, we always want to have. So, uh, so that definitely gives you, you know, good credential to see mm. that if some part of your work has been published or not. 
And traditional publishing, as far as English poetry is concerned, uh, yes, Mona Lisa says, you know, there is a lot of scope now for self-publishing, you know, and uh, uh, e-publishing. Again, you know, you can uh, have your own uh, e-books. Uh, yes. You know, there is direct publishing as far as Kindle is concerned. So there is a lot of scope for that. I think it's finally a choice as a writer what you want to do. Right. Because uh, for, uh, see, in the English poetry circle, sometimes, you know, you want to go through the traditional publishing, uh, this one. And, uh, of course, the, the big ones do not uh, take up everything. You know, like you have, you know, you have Penguin, like, for example, it's, it's a very big name. So, obviously, there are only a few poets whose works they would like to look because, you know, as Mona Lisa and Jasmine mm -hmm. also said, it's easy to sell poetry books okay and as a publisher i need to look at my uh, you know revenue i need to see where i'm going to get my costs back so obviously uh, that is a concern but there are a lot of uh, small or do i say medium sized or good publishing houses which are coming up at least even in the traditional space mm -hmm. so there is a copper coin uh, publishing mm -hmm. house there's a red river publishing house and of course there's havakal publishers also right. so Yes. They're all they're all small to medium sized, uh, doing a number, and they are uh, you know building a good lineup of uh, poets. So that is as far as the the publishing is concerned. So, uh, uh, but whether you want to have uh, as a, as a hard bound book or you want to go for you know your own uh, e e publishing which you want to do, I think it's a choice which we as a writers uh, you know. Uh, would mm. want to make of usually, course. You know, yes. how you yes. want your work out to be there like if you see chap books chap books are not very popular in india in fact there mm -hmm. is no market for chap books to be very frank mm. as much mm. as there is a market in the us mm. you know you have a good collection of you know there is this uh, rattle poetry which is a very uh, yes, uh, you know a very mm. renowned mm. a very renowned platform and they have the rattle poetry chap book prize every year and I have seen their chat books, which are very good, just about, you know, 16, 17 poems. In fact, I remember one poet had an entire theme uh, written on prison. You know, she had mm. uh, done some, yeah, she was doing some uh, work uh, for, for prisoners. And it was basically, you know, she was doing workshops with them to make them write poetry. And I'm like, uh, you know, where all do you that's find that? Yeah, 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 right. That's an interesting concept. But then she also got an opportunity to put it together as a chat book. Right. So, but uh, here in India, chapbook as such don't have a market. But then there are platforms which do it. There is a there is a publishing house called Yavanika Press, which does uh, you know chapbooks. They are all e-books though. Okay. They are again, of course, they are all uh, labeled. You know, there is a price to it. Right. It's not uh, uh, you know they are not Correct. free, not free to read. Right. So, but they do. So uh, you know, small presses like Yavanika Press. What I have seen is they, they are able to bring free verse. They are able to bring haiku. They are able to uh, bring, uh, you know, all, all the genres. And mm. they are able to, since it's an e-book and in the form of a chat book, they are able to bring both Indian and international uh, writers together on one platform. I think right. somewhere that also matters. So, you know, the yes. scene has evolved a lot from, from the, uh, you know, the, the strictly traditional mode to a lot of options now. Like as Jasmine yes. said, you know, spoken word needs a voice. In fact, why only spoken word? Even free verse, what we write needs a voice. Uh, yes, you know, yes. in, in, yeah, in fact, um, in, in, in a closed group of uh, uh, poets, we were talking that when you read a work, you tend to read the work in your own voice. Mm. But if you have heard mm. the, the writer or the poet read it, then you know there is a very different connection. You tend to connect with what the writer has in mind while writing that. Right. You know, right. Especially when it, yeah. So uh, definitely reading gives a very different quality to uh, to a written body of work. So like, like Jasmine I, said, you know, spoken word needs that platform. It has to go through video. It has to connect. I think that that thing is coming to, uh, uh, you know, that thing is coming slowly in free verse also. As we see, there are, there are uh, you know, poetry reading sessions being done. Even though we may open a book and read, but how well you read is is what yeah. how well you connect with the audience at the True. end of the right. day. So yes. now yes. that there is a lot of space for audio, uh, you know, audio books as Mona Lisa is putting out, you know, there is a lot of space for these kind of works. In agreed, fact, I have agreed. seen videos, uh, especially done on uh, you know Haibun, which is uh, you know the mm -hmm. uh, the prose poetry form, where there'll be a video moving to capture a scene. 
and and there'll be a voice behind of the poet the writer mm. the poet yes, is not yes. there on the scene you know so a complete imagery you get to see what the writer is visualizing what he's writing so i think technology has advanced where there are lot of ways of experimenting and trying out to put our work forward and i think that's what we need to do you know we are no longer writers in our shells you know poets are no longer shy otherwise we wouldn't be talking today to each other right it's right, not on the right. social media platform <laughs> <laughs> so i think so uh, yeah so we need to uh, uh, we need to put our work forward because that is a way we also learn like right. how we say you know when when you share your work with others you get a lot of comments you get a lot of critique i think the same thing happens even to any piece whether it is a mm. pure spoken word what jasmine does or even a free verse work when you read it you know you yourself connect with your own work and see whether it's working out or not and then yes. of course the connect with the audience so right. uh, yeah. you know so yeah so th that's about great it. great i think we got so many like you know as even sarita shukla puts it it was really an uh, you know insightful session and that she loved it thank you sarita and of course uh, so there's somebody who um, padma kumar says that a sa few sample lines from each that highlights their style will be great to listen to well we are already you know like we have planned to do that so before we actually end the session with your recital there's one last question i want to ask you um which is something all the writers of btb you know they want to know that okay we want to write a good poem so two to three practical uh, tips you can say or suggestions or whatever it is from your journey what you've learned uh, which maybe they should do not do or should keep in mind so yes two to three tips from each of you before we get to the recital so yes jasmine let's begin with you and jasmine is going to be like yaar bas ho jata hai so i <laughs> you know like because she always says that and i know that it comes to <laughs> but i'm sure there is some method to this uh, i know i Of course, you are. So, for any kind of writing or poetry, also, I think first thing is that be at it, be at it. It's like a any muscle. The more you exercise, it's going to keep right. getting better and better. And uh, also that to keep reading. I might have a writer's block. I think mm. six months here, I have a writer's block. But I should not have a reading block. I mean, I should yeah, be able true. to. Uh, Uh, I have that thing of uh, uh, being able to read and uh, get a lot out of poetry from others. So that block should never be there. The more you read, the more I think uh, you. And about uh, when you are talking about finding uh, a subject, or a subject is also like you know. This, uh, for me, it has always been the subject has come to me. I have never right. uh, look. You know, it might sound a very negative statement from my side. Every piece I write, I feel. Last piece I'm writing, and I'm going to put my pen, my legs up, and just uh, because I'm that kind of a wants to take a break at the drop of a hat from everything. So I feel this is my last piece, and I feel because that piece has taken everything that I had inside me. So maybe this is the last piece I'm writing. But after a few months, I'm always pleasantly surprised that there is some subject that will, I mean, come finding me. um huh. as, it's, uh, yeah yeah is yeah. um, uh, you know uh, uh, it's somebody's quote i'm forgetting the name but they say that the subject never comes to you from the front door you know uh, it will either come to you from a keyhole or a chimney or a, um or from the window or somewhere like that you approach the your subject like it's like that it's not that okay it is there i'm going to write about it no It, there are ten and hundreds of things about that that, and it is not also when we pick up a pen and paper that actually poetry happens. For me, it happens while I am in the middle of the most mundane task. <laughs> it's just that they are, of course, they are waiting to find a pen and paper to be a, a kind of uh, uh, poured onto that. But I'm when I'm driving, everybody has their own time. Some people will find right. early morning. very wonderful to write some people i find i forget the best of ideas when i'm driving alone somewhere and uh, when i have when i do a show head stand when i turn upside down i, I get the best of ideas i feel very refreshed and um, uh, you know we have uh, 
Dr. Ajitsi, but I think uh, keep reading and keep writing is something that is going to work always. Rest, everything is very uh, particular to every individual person. The kind of habit develop or the kind of uh, uh, process we follow. So uh, keep reading, keep writing and uh, right. that works. Great. I think that's, that's a right. very important advice actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, 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 true. Uh, yes, Mona. So some pearls of wisdom from you. <laughs> Well, uh, I would say, as Jasmine has said, I would agree with that, that you have to read a lot. Read as mm -hmm. many poets you can. Uh, read the modern ones, the contemporary ones, those uh, mm -hmm. uh, the titles right. which are available now in the market. Read them. And uh, from my side, I follow three simple rules. I follow my heart. I try to feel myself in uh, that particular place from where I want to you know, show my protagonist is in uh, basically because my uh, most of my poems are story based and uh, they have a protagonist so i try to feel from their shoes and uh, i try to be authentic i uh, read a lot i uh, you know uh, absorb the essence of the poetry that i read but then i create my own style so you need to be okay. authentic mm -hmm. yeah. yes very important point to, of being authentic and you know being true to your own voice and uh, you mm -hmm. know style that comes naturally to you that's that's mm -hmm. great and yes akila well they have already said read 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 write 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 you know and uh, <laughs> and, and and be ready to trash your work uh, uh, in fact i i had an very opportunity of point. yeah i had an opportunity of listening to nobunita dev sen uh, the late Nobunita Dev Sen, who's, a, mm. who's an acclaimed, uh, you know, short story writer. Yes, yes. I, I, yeah, at, at the Goa Literature Festival. And she said that if you want to write, if you're really serious on writing, write daily. Even if you have to trash the paper, it doesn't matter. Even if you have to stare and you write only two words, it doesn't matter. But write daily. Okay. Now, mm. let me be honest and confess that I haven't really been doing that. But then uh, I hope to do that at least, you know, <laughs> at some point of time. But uh, but but yeah, see, it's it's like as Jasmine said, you know, when you move a muscle regularly, you know, you're it, it becomes more flexible, and that's what happens to writing. And and as far as reading is concerned, I think we should be open to reading everything: fiction, non-fiction, novella, poetry. It's not that if I'm writing poetry, I read only poetry. Uh, you know, yes. it's, it's because it's because writing as the whole. Yeah, it's it's a language. You don't know from where you'll pick what. Um, yes. In fact, uh, you know, in in a, in a closed in a in a in a closed uh, a, a poetry study circle, they they also said that you know, even if it's a piece of news, read it. Even if it's an mm. article in a magazine, yes. you read it. Agree you know? completely. Because and, uh, I, I along the the shampoo bottle, uh, you know, the thing those <laughs> labels they carry, I yeah. read them thoroughly. I have this habit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you never know uh, because see I think as as and when we write you also need to understand when we review our own work what is good writing and what is not a good writing yes, and to know course. what it is good or not you need to read up and unless we read we won't know and the other thing especially for the younger poets now that there is you know social media there are a lot of platforms for publishing you know for your work to be noticed don't be in a hurry to do that Mm. It's, you know, it's, it's not that that you're published and you're done with it. No, mm. it's also not that that you're not getting published. It should not, uh, you know, oh, you haven't reached anywhere. No, it's not like that. In fact, in that closed, uh, closed uh, poetry study circle, they, they even said that, uh, you know, you should aim for 100 rejections. Mm. Yeah. Very interesting. You know? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I was like, yeah, that's an exercise because, uh, you know, uh, and also the other thing I've seen when you when you look at uh, anthologies or journals as deadlines, uh, you know, to submit mm. one mm -hmm. thing these submission calls make you do is to go back to your written piece and edit them, edit them specifically for the purpose of submission, irrespective of whether they get accepted or not. But mm. at the end of it, the journey, the process definitely takes you, you know, ahead. Oh, you yes. know, in fact, day before yes. yesterday, I got I got two rejections. So yeah, mm. <laughs> I mean, mm. you need to be sure. open to that entire yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's not that yeah, it's not that that unless I get patted on my back, I'm not good enough. Like you know, I'll mm. always uh, take what Shivakami once told me, a senior poet, that unless I call myself one a poet, who else is going to be? And I think yes. unless that self-realization happens, we are not going to progress any further. So. 
uh, we do we do need accolades we also need brickbats but then neither yeah. of them define us what 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 gets defined is uh, you know is is our process and is this journey beautiful. and i think that's what yes, matters yeah great i think we got some excellent insights perspectives especially you know i think that perspective of uh, you know aiming for rejections i think that really just made me look at things <laughs> from a totally different perspective and uh, it's so true that you know you still take a you know some steps forward even if you're say getting rejected or but that whole process it it is giving you that kind of growth so you know mm -hmm. at, at the end of the day that's all uh, we're looking for and um, I think we are receiving some great comments. I'm unfortunately, you know, we don't have time to see all of them, but I would definitely, you know, maybe share one or two before we go to the recital. So this is quite a big comment. I'm sorry, some of you have got hidden, but yeah, it is a very good comment. So I'll probably quickly read it out. Uh, so Preeti Manaktala says, it was a pleasure to listen to all the beautiful people here. You all inspired me today through your wonderful words of expertise. And as Jasmine put it, be at it. I'm going to do the same. I'm grateful and happy to be writing what I write. I take immense pride in what I write. Whether or not it is well received, next thing I will be doing going forward is start reading a lot. Thank you to you all. That is such a lovely, heartfelt comment, Preeti. Thank you so much for that. And uh, I hope, uh, you know, if, I, I'm, I mean, I'm sure actually that everybody has taken so much from this session today. Um, so please, whenever you all get time later, you can go through these comments and respond because some of them are specifically, you know, uh, for you all. So are you all now ready for the recital? Yes, sure. Yes. Yes. And our audience is ready to get enthralled. I'm ready to get enthralled. So yes, Jasmine, we begin with the spoken word expert, uh, you know, the celebrity actually. So I always tell her you're, you know, my, <laughs> she's uh, the celebrity. So yes, Jasmine. <laughs> I don't know. I know, I know. I'm a little missing because you know my pieces are all very long, like so. I and I don't think so. We have maybe you can read a part of it if you think it is like you know. I mean something which uh, yeah, that's also fine. Yep, yep. So I'm, I'm going to be reading out not one of my very popular pieces is that, but it is I think one of the pieces very close to my heart. It is on. Okay. Uh, it is growing the next generation. Next growing. Yeah, generation. I love this one too. Uh, yep. Yep. His son had moved out of home. Uh, he went for his higher studies, and there was um, uh, an empty. I had written it at that time. So it goes uh, the mirror on my wall has seen it all. It winks back at us now as if asking, darling, we all are turning 18 and how. The mirror on our wall has minutes, a million moments and zillion milestones of my marching silver troops. His shining salt and peppers, but the best ones of the boy shooting beyond our shoulders. The mirror on my wall has been a witness a zillion dramas that unfolded over the last 18 years. Our tempers, our tantrums, our mood swings, our meltdowns from toddlerhood to teens, the zeniths, the nothing, and everything else that fell in between. The mirror in my house is missing him much. The fledgling who has just flown away out of our nest. He braces up for adulthood. We embrace our midlife. But pause for a while to look back at 18 years failing to A realization we were not just raising a child, we were growing up with him one milestone at a time. We passed on one learning, we got back 10 in return. He was outgrowing his pajama, we were outgrowing our paradigms. We loved going for adventures and roller coasters, but nothing could beat this one. One moment mystical and magical, next moment navigating a minefield. One moment rising up above ourselves and raising, next moment at each other's hairs. Yes, some days we flunked, we royally flouted. Next morning we were making moments and pouting. We will be perfect parents and we will raise flawless trophy kids. Yes, that's how we look at it. Till we become parents and our neck beat into it. 
there is no single modus operandi that guarantees a perfect 10 on 10. Good parenting is always imperfect. It is trying to be perfect that gets in the way of good. Values, best passed on in the ways we are living our lives. They are not dictates to be handed over to the next generation to toe the dotted line. We were raised in a different era. We, they are growing up in a totally different dynamic. What was the rule book I followed might need a revolution to be done away with. I have not seen mute modes of one generation soliciting mutinies from the next one. It is not never my way or the highway. It is not a throne to command respect from. It's a hot seat of careful responsibility, delicate directions. One moment holding softly and guiding, next moment just letting go. There could be a different controlling. There is love in deep control. There is love in not comparing our times versus your times, our struggles versus your getting it all on a platter. There is love in celebrating. Legacies being passed, there is love in shedding off dead leaves and beliefs. There is love in seeing fresh flowers bloom and grow. Remember, we were cradled by Guru Darshan. We are raising a Netflix generation. We were raised on weekly ration, one movie, one chitrahar. We too were blinded when VCRs and cable TVs waged their wars. We too resented blanket bans on TVs during exams. We too have revolted and read myths and bones and tintins hidden inside our textbooks. We did figure out our lives, didn't we? After binge watching our marathons of movies on rented VCRs and cassettes overnight. So keep calm and keep parenting on. Keep calm and keep parenting on. It's on growing up three generations. One adulting on days of friends, another midlife age on heaven, and yet another binge watching Zindagi Gulzar hair. The cautions and concerns are for all, not just one generation. Let our virtual identities not block out our real ones. Let the screen times not screen out our real relations for time and trust. Time and trust will never cease to be the eternal battle mantra. This Gen Next will take on the world. Let the Game of Thrones be done. In the middle of their PUBGs and puberties, their teenage and their Tinders rolling their eyes when we start our lectures or building their own YouTube ventures, our millennials are going to be spearheading, pathbreaking researches and revolutions. So let's not forget to make memories and moments for one day when they fly off our nests. It is just these memories and moments that are going to warm our heart and make them fly back to the nest. Wow. Sorry, I cut out parts because it was no 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 that's fine but it was still so impactful and beautiful and um, you know and i like how you sprinkle humor you know like in between and it's it's and you bring so many emotions out you make a smile cry everything you know amazing jasmine and uh, even lakshmi nataraj ma'am has said that you know wonderful words so musical to listen uh, so yeah i mean that was great Okay, so now Mona, are you ready? Yeah, sure. So uh, I'll read from my book. Uh, this is The Devil's Wife. This book Lovely. is basically dedicated to all the wives out there and how much love they pour over their husband because I also write love poems. So I'm going to read one of the love poems from this book. Yeah, it's okay. a small poem. Sure. Okay. Uh, the title is I Cry Too. At nights, darling, only at nights, I will touch your face with my soft palms, gliding them gradually towards your fair cheeks. My delicate finger, slightly tangled in your heavily grown beard, touching then your pink lips, which you still keep agape while in slumber. As you snore mildly under the warm duet with your somnolent body, covered half till waist, a practice you sleep with from your youth. 
and I would sit by your side on the bed where you kip like a child with pillows cuddled towards your chest and thighs that brings a smile on my face and a sigh. I will then hold your limbs and caress them for some time to take out that weariness each day you earn. Disturbed, however, by my presence, you twist and turn. I then become quiet and I know you are dreaming about me. When those tears fall from the sight of your eyes, I cup my hands to catch them. Yet it escapes me and falls on the white pillow. With great dismay, I glance at your peaceful face. Then I lay my head on your brawny chest, listening those swift beats that still speaks my name. And I cry too in silence. Only my tears aren't visible anymore, just the way you wanted. I know you had always hated to see me cry. Lovely. That's so beautiful and, and very touching. That amazing. Very nice. Thank you so much. Thank you. And yes, so Akila, um, so you will be closing this beautiful discussion with your recital. So uh, I think I, I'll read a haibun, which is yeah. uh, a, a prose I was hoping poem. for that, act, you know, when I was thinking about it. Yeah. So uh, haibun is a form of uh, prose poem, which is a prose followed by a haiku in the, from the Japanese genre. So this haibun is titled Deadlines. OK. Petrichor, weighing the sky, a cuckoo's cry. Save these shredded clusters of hair. Hold a few of them and note the tip of each one curling into a fairy tale where all roads meander towards a castle of happily ever after. Do you see the strands dipped in silver gray, scented with fables where karma comes a full circle? Ma calls the knotted ones sparrows nests. If you watch them for long, you will find them honeycombed with stories. On the days of dew and mist, these bunches would poem down as etymologies or remain palmed in virtues of time to break down later into a cathartic downpour. Would you please embose them with my time? Let the foreword be my epitaph. Chemo, she sweeps the garden twice over. Chemo. She sweeps the garden twice over. Thank you. So wow. the last bit, the last three lines, which are repeated twice is a haiku. So usually yes, we are supposed yes, to yes. recite yes. the haiku twice for a closure. Wow. Beautiful. And I think we got such varied forms of poetry to hear today. I'm so like, you know, I, I feel so blessed that I got this opportunity. And uh, so, yeah, we with this, we come to the end of the session, which I personally didn't even realize that, you know, we overshot the time and it just didn't feel like it. Like, you know, and I it was such a wonderful discussion. We miss Santosh Bakaya, ma'am, ma'am. Uh, you know, you can join back and I wish you also would have been a part of this discussion. But um, I'm glad at least you could talk about, you know, your journey of how it started. Uh, so, yes, thank you so much, Jasmine, Mona Lisa and Akila. I'm really, really grateful uh, for your presence today. And people have really loved this session. So thank you once again. Thank, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you so much. Thank you so you much. Really it was a pleasure. Session. Thank you. And uh, to the audience. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And to the audience too, thank you so much uh, for joining and for posting such lovely comments, um, which I'm sure all our uh, you know panelists will enjoy reading later at leisure. So yes, bye. And I'll be back next month with another roundtable discussion with editors. So, you know, because I feel that is also an important topic to be discussed. We've been discussing a lot about writing and let's get the editor's perspective next time. So bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, Akila.